This is unusual in its magnitude. This is pretty much the first time this has ever happened on Gordon College campus. The size of this event and the audacity of it in inviting a rabbi and a an imam to come speak here. It's big for the college, and I think it's a really important step. We want to recognize that some valid criticisms of evangelicalism have been made, but at the same time, there's a profound loyalty uh, to um, evangelical Christianity, and that's something that's not really negotiable at a place like Gordon. The majority of the student body would be evangelical. Most would use telltale evangelical terms to describe their faith, such as having a personal relationship with Jesus. It's always been an intellectually serious evangelical school that uh, does not try to divorce faith from learning, but tries to uh, integrate them. I think the, the Lily Grant and the programs uh, that we establish as a result of that helps Gordon further its own mission. This morning, our three panelists are going to begin talking about some thoughts they have about the other two faiths. And the idea behind the trialogue was to, to bring representatives of the, the Christian faith, a Jewish rabbi and an imam uh, together uh, to uh, at least begin a conversation. I'm deeply moved by the way Christians act with love and compassion. It is proof to me that it is absolutely false to say that Christianity has only faith and not works. Prophet Muhammad said, he who hurts a Jew or a Christian, it will be as if he has hurt Muhammad himself. To find the similarities and find the differences really helps to promote understanding of your own faith and your own ideas and to make sure that you've thought through them. You're not just accepting them because that's what you've been fed. I was wondering if the panel could comment a little bit on the relationship between interfaith relations and conversion. Are, are we allowed to try and convert one another? Um, and and <laughs> how, how far are we able to talk to each other, trying to convince one another and, and, and things like that? So. You can pray with people and you can pray for people, but, but God is the one who calls people. I think that's a lesson that Christians have not learned. I think the disastrous results in the past of Christians not learning that is a legacy that as Christians today, uh, we shouldn't forget. There are obviously, I think, many strengths of evangelicalism from um, you know, charity, outreach, uh, social concerns, but uh, understanding the depth of the Christian intellectual tradition is probably not, not one of them. My church back home was pursuing intellectual questions basically from the standpoint of taking Christian faith and saying, okay, this is what's true, we know this already. How do we prove that to everyone else out there? I would almost consider C.S. Lewis a mentor of mine, because reading his books showed me that faith can be intellectual, uh, and that we can think intellectually about questions of faith, uh, and that we don't just have to uh, check our brains at the door when we go to church. I'm the director of the Critical Loyalty Project, which is sort of an umbrella term that that encompasses a number of programs. And within that, my special task is to direct the Great Books Honors Program, which we're calling uh, the Jerusalem and Athens Forum. Jerusalem symbolizing faith and Athens symbolizing the, the world of, of learning. In the Jerusalem Athens Forum, we're interacting with um, not just the history of Christian thought, but the history of, of human thought. Let's pray this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that our divisions being healed we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You take 14 bright students who have different majors, different faith backgrounds, and you sit them down with a text like Benedict's Rule uh, or Dante's Inferno, and it's quite amazing the type of conversations and stimulation, uh, intellectual stimulation that come out of that. Let me just pose this question. Doesn't this just kind of give you some dualism that, you know, you're... Christian life is in one compartment. If we take our faith seriously, it shouldn't apply to all dimensions of life, including the political uh, sphere, right? Christians sometimes think they're just exempt from political um, servitude, and I feel that it is really important. It's not that it's just that we can be involved with the secular world, but I feel that we are in a place that we should be involved. To say we're going to employ Christian ideals in government, well, what does that mean? Christianity is so divided that how can you say we want to implement specifically 
Christian ideals into government. It's Calvin wants to implement Calvinism in government. You know, we can apply some gospel principles. You know, if we if we believe that they're true, uh, we should we should probably try to implement them in more areas than just personal life. The Jerusalem Athens Forum. It's a group of people interested in a lot of the same questions, interested in seeking truth together, and we're bouncing ideas off each other. We're interacting with texts with each other, and I think that's helped me test my own assumptions and test my own uh, perceptions. This year, at Gordon, I think I've. I've started to pursue questions from, okay, well, starting from ground zero, how do I even know that what I believe is true? Is it possible to have absolute certainty about things? Uh, it's just a great concept to me to try to, to say, okay, well, what if this isn't true? What do I do with that? This semester has been a deconstruction of my faith. I've come to a point where I, I, I pray or I read scripture or I go to church and I, I say, this feels good, this is familiar to me, but in what sense do I take it to be true? And, and how, can I, how can I be certain of that? Do I need to be certain of that? I think students' vocations are shaped by what they read. Both scripture and tradition provides one with a lot of intellectual and spiritual food for thought to shape who you're becoming. Discovering vocation, I think, is a part of this questioning process that I'm going through. And I think I'm seeing, on the other side of my doubt, a firmer faith and a deeper truth. And I have to go through there. I have to go through doubt to get there.